Hi, good afternoon. Haven't done a video for quite some time, but um, today for some reason, April 30th, last day of the month of April, um, I wanted to make a video on this place here, Lucifer's Pizza. I haven't gone in there and talked to anyone yet, but I'm about to do that right now. Um, I'm gonna try to get the recording on here. And obviously I'll keep the phone where I'm not going to be filming the person or the employee in there. But um, here, let, I'm just gonna go in there and ask him some questions. Uh, by the way, this Lucifer's Pizza, there is, um, I looked it up on Google, there's I think three or four locations, three, I think it's three or four locations. Two or three of those locations are here in Hollywood, the heart of Hollywood. Um, and then one of them is just in uh, you know, over by Universal Studios. So they're all relatively very close to each other. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and ask them some questions. I saw some, um, some stuff online of what the inside looks like. And this is perversion, really. Um, I don't expect anything different from the menu, though. But I'm going to go in there and ask. So um, I will leave a link to this place. Also, you can look it up online. And, um, yeah, I mean, the end times are, are pretty much uh, drawing closer and closer. Um, no one can... Uh, the word says, who can make straight the path that the Lord has made crooked? And who can make crooked the path that the Lord has made straight? So at the end of the day, it's going to happen what the book of Revelation says. In the end times, people will be lovers of themselves. Um, so with that being said, uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to check it out. Hollywood, I mean, this is a place of demonic activity. I mean, we have Capitol Records. Uh, I don't think I can. I mean, there's Paramount over there. You can see it. All right. Uh, just down the street here, three blocks is uh, Netflix, one of the Netflix corporations. And Capitol Records is located over that way, but I can't, you can't see it from here because of the buildings, though. Uh, and there's witches that pray over all the music that comes out and just just demonic stuff just i mean the the, the music is made to sexualize people to uh drugs sex rock and roll uh you name it it's just lawlessness so it's um i'm gonna go ahead and uh go in here and uh let's see what happens i'm just gonna have to tuck the phone away here Is this the first location? I'm not sure if it's the first. Oh, okay, because I think it's like three or four locations, yeah, right? Yeah, there is. Yeah. There's the Snowstone, Perth, and Studio City. Studio City, right. Okay, so four. Four locations. Cool. Manhattan Beach House one. Okay. Still looking.
locations you saw it there three of them here in the heart of hollywood and so you can see in the bag it says damn good right damn good and of course it says damn good and everything that lucifer does is going to be good at least uh that's the way it's going to be uh portrayed here in, in this world as good because the word of god says that which is they say that which is good is bad and that which is bad is good and uh, i mean i can say and i can say lord pray and i can pray and i can say lord may that location go away may all this happen but at the end of the day who can um like i said who can stop what the lord has already said it would have happened in the last days uh there will be so much evil um yes and People will have uh, itching, itching ears for uh, for uh, for false doctrine. I just started to focus on myself just now. Hey, sorry about that. I was doing some uh, some car work to my car, and I just noticed my face is all. <laughs> Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Um, we're here to promote Jesus and to. Uh, also make mention anything that the uh, that Satan uh, Satan and his schemes his lies his tools that he uses there's actually a Lucifer hotel also apparently uh, someone mentioned it to me and I looked it up online and yes it's it's more and more demonic um, uh, Hollywood has portrayed it that way um, if they try to hide it, they have. They don't say it as much, but the Babylonian Theater, which is the um, where they hold the Oscars every single year, um, it's it's Satan. Satan is their god. Is who they serve. So when they say it's God and God made it happen for them, they're really talking about Satan. Of course, they're not saying Satan, but. Um, everything is very uh, um, much portrayed towards ushering the kingdom of Satan and promoting it. Uh, the Hollywood stars are just puppets that Satan uses so he can further his kingdom. Uh, Satan's just a copycat of uh, Jesus. They pray also, this uh, satanic church, they pray uh, whether it's Spanish, Santeria, or the satanic church or uh, Freemasons it's all the same thing they're, they're all for Satan um, just for lawlessness perversion um, I would there I will make sure to leave um, links also check out the links uh, these links are very much eye-opening as to uh, really what's going on in the world what's going on in Hollywood and hot yes in Hollywood and um, and yeah, so this COVID thing, it's just helped to usher the kingdom of Satan to, to put fear in people. Just like when the lockdown first happened and everyone was wearing masks and it was a mandatory thing. And washing of the hands six feet apart. Pretty much doing the same thing that the Freemasons do. They got all of us to do that. Uh, chant Black Lives Matter, do the protests and do all that stuff. Satan loves lawlessness. He loves... Um, confusion and anything that is opposite to structure opposite to love hate you know the opposite of love is hate the opposite of good is bad the opposite of of, uh, of mercy is lawlessness it's just it's the opposite that's what Satan that's what he represents and um, anyhow I just went in there to uh, show you that um, 
I mean, this place really does exist. I won't be stopping by the other places. I think I, I pretty much had enough going in there. Um, yeah. Um, something, I mean, the vibe that I got, because I didn't put the, the lady on camera there. This, this lady is probably like a witch. Like, I don't know. I, I just got this very bad vibe. Um, uh, I don't know. Her hair was painted, and there was she had piercings also. And anyhow, I, I there was only the cook that I saw, um, and then her and uh, and yeah. I just anyhow. I just have to get out of there. So. Um, just pray. We gotta pray for this end times at the Lord. Um, that we stay uh, prayerful and uh, encouraging one another, strong in the faith. Um, quite frankly, the way I look at Satan, that he's a master deceiver, very much like my ex fiance. And I'm not going to um, um, I'm not going to I, I don't like to say names or any of that stuff so I'm not going to go into that but I remember very clear this conversation that I had with her and and um, bear in mind that we've had Bible studies to, to this point right before she became my fiance and all that of course you have to know the person that they love Jesus and and, um, you know, praising Jesus and she's all, I mean, she's all for Jesus. Let's put it that way. Like when you think of someone being super saved, you probably think of my ex-fiance, but here's what happened throughout the relationship. It had its ups and downs, like all relationships that they're not perfect. We have, uh, they have their, uh, problems. Every couple does. And, um, one day. This is uh, towards the end of our relationship already. And this is what she said. She said, I wake up um, every morning and I just, uh, uh, I just, I, I just, she just, I hate, I hate Jesus. Literally said the words, I hate Jesus. And she repeated that twice, two or three times. I just, I hate him. And... I mean, I, I'm in shock. I'm just thinking to myself, um, I, I don't think I want to be with you. Someone who says such, such words, why in the world we're unequ unequally yoked? I mean, that's the first thing that I thought. It's this is not going to work out, and of course it didn't work out. Some she's my ex-fiance now, but um, thank God that you know something I'm grateful for is that I didn't get married. That my marriage is to to Jesus first, right? That's what my this white uh, ring represents, a ring of purity. And I just I was at the point that we were almost like rushing into marriage. And, and I'm just grateful. Wow. Like I, that was a, that was a giant pitfall there for me. If I, if I would have gone into that. Um, yeah. So all I can do. And if you're, if you are a believer who hates Jesus, I mean, there's one thing to be mad at God. I mean, I know I was questioning the Lord regarding my, uh, an ex-girlfriend that I had and she passed away um and I was questioning I was mad also and just had just questioning the Lord well why would you bring her to my life there's a difference between being mad at Jesus or yeah being mad at, at, at God but there's a difference between that and hate it's it's a it's a big big difference and I understand being mad at God. I, I understand having questions like, Lord, why did this happen in my life? But to say, I, I hate Jesus. And to like, 
anyhow, the way she said it was just very affirmative, very, um, uh, I'm not going to go to go into that anymore, but that's the way I view Lucifer, right? Like, like Lucifer's uh, pizza, as you can see there. Here's a pizza. It's delicious. It's damn, damn, what does it say? Damn good. Yeah, it's damn, yeah, it'll damn you for sure, right? Um, he is a master. And he is smarter than any human being. Let's put it that way. He's been around this whole time. He deceived even a third of the angels, so... Um, and those are his workers now, and they're helping him uh, magnify his kingdom and grow his kingdom. And, you know, Satan has his workers, too. Um, God himself is he's almighty, all-powerful. There's no one like him. But if you're in that place where you say you hate Jesus or you're mad at Jesus, I, I just pray that he will turn that around. I also pray for that. I've prayed for that for my ex fiance too that she will come to that point where she can see that there's really nothing to hate about jesus or to hate him there's no i mean his word says they hated me without a cause the world hates jesus without a cause i mean what has jesus done for us other than give up his his very own life for us so that we can be with him in heaven he gave his life so we can be treated like him by the father and if you're in that place i will pray for you at the end of this video for sure um and and yeah if you if you have questions for the lord well ask the lord hey ask the lord he says ask ask for wisdom ask for anything in his name and i know when i ask the questions that i asked regarding my my ex-girlfriend um he gave me he gave me answers for that. Nonetheless, it was a painful moment though. That was that was tragic. She was only twenty years old, um, and you know she left behind two children. And anyhow, it, it was very heartbreaking for me. Um, it was almost two years um, to be able to I guess to move forward. Um, and even then, I still uh, keep contact, keep in touch with, with her family because they're also Christians, right? They're believers. And um, as painful as it was, the fact of the matter is that we're all going to have to go through that pain of losing someone because one out of one dies. And it's, it's, what's, it's what will happen. So uh, our job is, as believers is to, to promote Jesus, right? to promote his kingdom to make disciples um, his word says draw near to me and I will draw near to you and that is a thousand percent true draw near to Jesus and he will draw near to you uh, so let's go ahead let's go ahead and pray and um, and yes father thank you for this day thank you that you are good that you are magnificent you're all powerful lord and whatever is going to happen i mean it doesn't matter if we vote for the republican for the democrat whoever the heck we vote for it doesn't even matter because it's going to happen what's going to happen your word says that the government the government rests upon your shoulders this is the king of kings lord of lords you remove kings and you put kings you remove presidents and you put presidents and in the last days the days will become more and more evil. Yes, yeah, Lucifer's Pizza is right here. And next to that is another uh, very bad company also, Starbucks. But not, nonetheless, it's um, the days will be more and more evil. People will be lovers of themselves. Help us, Father, to abide in you as the branch, as the branches that we are to bear fruit. And you are the vine, Lord. You are the vine that we were, were we we, uh, we feed from, Lord, and 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 you feed us, Lord. Help us to um, 
prioritize you. I know I'm guilty of putting you on the back burner at times. But prioritize you and get into the word and, and just draw near to you and you will draw near to us. Lord, I pray for every person who's, whose heart is broken, whether it's they lost a loved one, a fiance, a girlfriend, or just family member or friend. And just, yeah, they just lost a loved one and, and they're, um, they're going through a season of mourning, Lord. I, I myself... I myself personally know what that's like and it's it's um it's a very difficult it's a very tough season Uh, and father i just ask that you be near to them i mean your word says you're near to the brokenhearted lord so i just ask that that i ask for those souls for those lives um to for them to draw near to you whether they're listening to this prayer or not lord we pray for them right now lord that you draw near to them lord that you reveal yourself to them in such a tangible way, Father. Uh, and maybe because of that loss, they will draw more near to you. You will you will um, bring more to Christ. You will save families, Lord. And much like Paul and Silas when they were in prison, and they, uh, the salvation came to the family of the guard. The guard, the guard who was he was about to kill himself actually, and then it was. Paul and Silas, I said, hey, don't do that. No prisoner has left their cell. And here comes a guard saying, so what must I do to be saved? And and it's that's the reason why. I think to myself, that's maybe the reason why you brought Paul and Silas to that place. But even in the mist, at, even at night, at midnight they worship. That's the time where you just took him out of prison, Lord. You shook, you shook up the foundations of those prison cells. The chains came loose, and those the cell doors, cell gates, completely came open. In the same way, Father, you have you have uh, broken off those chains of restriction, those chains of uh, the, the chains of sin. Those chains of sin that keeps keeps us captive. It's, it's like a magnet in our heart, and and the, the world is this giant magnet, and it just it, it wants to pull us to 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 the worldly things, Lord. But but Father, we we walk by the Spirit, Lord. So so we have you, Father, to direct us. And even though the world is pulling with with all these uh, worldly things, Lord, whether it's movie stars, singers, politicians, Lucifer's pizza, whatever it may be. COVID, that we have you, Father, that that our hope and our trust is in you, Father God. So, Father, I ask for those who who love you, those who hate you. I ask for all of them, for your people, Israel, Lord. We ask that you you strengthen us, Lord, as believers, that you uh, help us to draw more near to you, Lord. So, ultimately, Father, we can help others draw near to you as well, Father. We can make disciples as well, Lord. May your love just uh, surround us, uh, go before us, your love, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. May, may you just bring an abundance of it, Lord, into our lives so we can just give a, give more of it away. And when people ask, well, why are you being so good, so merciful, so kind to me? It's simple. Jesus. That's it. One name. The name above all names, Jesus Christ. Uh, help us to be more like you, Lord. Help us to love with open arms like your son, Jesus manifested his love at the cross with open arms jesus name we pray amen all right so just want to uh say um declare jesus christ right acknowledge him before public before the men and he will acknowledge you before his father and his angels have a blessed day our home is not earth our home is heaven and we just our bodies just, our bodies, our souls, they're, they yearn to, to be with him, to be with Jesus. Um, I definitely can't wait for that day. But until that day, like Paul say, to live as Christ, to die as gain, and to suffer, suffer for, uh, and yeah, and to suffer, count it all joy. So have a blessed day. Go out there, make disciples, just start a conversation with someone. Um, you know, uh, people that I, I I see with the biggest faith are people that are homeless.
you tell them Jesus bless you and they'll say Jesus bless you too I've rarely ever had anyone who's homeless say anything uh, different than that but it's happened a lot of the uh, a lot of homeless people I, I think they, they walk by a lot of faith because of where their next dollar their next meal is going to come from and so they stand there and outside of a freeway or at the corner of a street asking for money and and they're just walking by faith <laughs> and anytime just just promote jesus any way you can you know whether it's handing food to a homeless person that's what i like to do or money or just praying for them Promote, promote Jesus anywhere you go. Um, at the grocery store, online, social media. That's actually the reason why I have social media though. It's just to to put more. I, I should be doing more on social media, but I've been so busy and caught up with um, with work. So I'm guilty of that worldly things. Uh, but I make sure at work, you know, promote Jesus. Do the same also. Jesus bless you.